Among the foothills of the Ozark Mountain Range that stretch into Union County in southern Illinois, rises a beacon, a monument of peace, faith, charity, and of hope. Towering above the landscape at over 111 feet tall and visible for 7,500 square miles, this is the Bald Knob Cross of Peace. Bald Knob Cross is situated in the Shawnee National Forest near the small town of Alto Pass. Bald Knob Mountain itself towers 1,000 feet above sea level. But how did a mountaintop in rural southern Illinois become first the site of an annual sunrise service and later the location of a 111-foot cross? The story begins in the spring of 1936 when a local reverend named William H. Lyerly and a mail carrier named Wayman Presley had a conversation about the region's need for a common gathering place for all denominations of faith. A conversation cross-visionary Wayman Presley later recalled during an interview on a national television show. Well, it seemed to us there were so many uh, little churches all over our part of Illinois that belonged to different denominations. It'd be nice if we could uh, invite them to come together, all of them come together sometimes for a genuine united service where we just kind of forget our care. It was during this conversation that the men noticed Bald Knob Mountain as it stood against the western horizon. It was the highest point of the region that either of the men had ever seen and was very close to the population center of the United States, making it an ideal location to hold their gathering. Mr. Lyerly and Mr. Presley began to plan their event around an Easter service. Wayman Presley sent out formal invitations and in the spring of 1937, more than 250 people converged on the mountaintop for what was the first Easter service. In the years that followed, that number would grow into the thousands. Before long, a nonprofit organization was formed and the mountaintop was purchased. Both Reverend Lyerly and Wayman Presley served as members of the board, which also included African American and female members long before the Equal Rights Movement shattering the racial and sexual prejudice of the time and reflecting the values of Christian faith. As attendance grew each Easter, so did the service, which came to include guest speakers and musical performances. The community was showing its support. Even a local Boy Scout troop helped to direct traffic and gave away free coffee to break the chill of the cold Easter morning. One local church donated its bell. With the gathering growing in size, Mr. Presley saw a need to build a monument to memorialize the location and to serve as a common symbol of the many denominations of Christian faith. This would be expensive, but soon the board was pouring over plans to build it. Meanwhile, crossed visionary Wayman Presley quits his job at the U.S. Postal Service to fully throw himself into his fundraising efforts. One particular fundraiser came about after a local woman named Myrta Klutz pledged a donation towards the project. Miss Klutz didn't actually have the money that she had promised, but had plenty of faith that she would find a way to fulfill her pledge. Then Myrta saw her answer when her sow pig had an abnormally large litter of piglets. Soon after, a campaign was developed to distribute pigs to willing farms to be raised and sold at a profit. Amazingly, nearly $30,000 was raised from this humble effort alone. Finally, in 1959, amid much fanfare, ground was broken to build the largest cross in the Western Hemisphere. Even NBC was present. Wayman's vision was becoming a reality. However, the cross would not be fully completed until 1963. In the decades that followed, the cross would attract thousands of visitors to the annual sunrise service held there each Easter. But time would also leave its mark on the once gleaming structure. Gradually, many of the original porcelain and steel panels began to fall off, exposing the framework to the elements. By 2006, 43 years after its completion, the Bald Knob Cross of Peace was clearly in trouble. To make matters worse, internal board disputes would eventually lead to litigation allowing the cross to fall further into disrepair. But still, hope remained. A group called the Friends of the Cross was organizing fundraising efforts to make much-needed repairs to the structure. 
By 2009, a new board was formed. Fundraising efforts were employed and restoration was underway. The first step of the process was to remove the old panels. That year, during the 71st annual sunrise service, the framework of the cross was lit up atop the mountain, making it visible for miles around. In the following months, crews would work to repair the frame and replace the worn out panels that made up the skin of the cross, restoring it to its former white luster. In total, more than $550,000 was raised through free will donations alone. And the result? Today, Bald Knob Cross looks much like it did when it was originally finished in 1963. Bald Knob Cross is open to the public, and its large open layout offers plenty of room for visitors to take in the views. And over 75 years later, the mountaintop is still home to the annual sunrise service first began in 1937. The cross also plays host to an annual blessing of the bikes event. Motorcycle enthusiasts ride to the summit once each spring to pray for a safe riding season. Throughout the year, visitors come to Bald Knob Cross to see the breathtaking vistas of the surrounding Shawnee National Forest. Come at the right time of year and you could even find yourself above the clouds. And so from its perch on the mountaintop, the cross continues to reflect the Christian values of faith, charity, hope, and peace and stands as a lasting testimony of God's love.